Realm presents Bullet Catcher, Season 3, Episode 1. Death in Watertown. Perhaps, when it got utterly dark, the piece of the darkness would become the same as light, so that my last experience would become as mysterious and musical as my first. Derek Raymond. He died with his eyes open. The mist hangs over the roofs of the houses, thick and gray, mellowing the day-long heat. The sound of the waterfall rumbles. By now they've grown used to the sound of it, the feeling of the ground trembling beneath their feet, their voices muffled by noise. Nax scans the street. Bronze, hard-packed earth crossed with wagon tracks and boot prints. The boardwalk groans under the weight of so many feet, crowding the storefronts of the general store, the candy shop, the saloons, and gambling halls. The air smells of water and sawdust. There's an energy in this place, Nack thinks. Hope. You feel that, son? What's that, Sheriff? The Sheriff smiles through the bristles of his mustache. The light glances off the mirror of his silver star-shaped badge. You feel it, he says. This town, it's different. Here, a person can think about tomorrow, as though there's some promise in it. He closes his eyes and breathes deep the humid air. And then he looks at Nack and says, Let's on our way, then. The two men, one old, one young, walk the new streets, their daily morning routine. Hard to imagine it's been almost two years. Two years since damnation, when the dam broke and spilled water into this dry basin at the foot of the plateau, turning the cracked dead ground black and green. People came from all over in no time. They brought families and lumber and dried empty barrels waiting to be filled with water. The town sprung up almost overnight. First just a few tents along the riverbank, then a few cabins here and there. And then, it seems to knack, He opened his eyes one morning and found before him a grid of streets, peopled with so many immigrants there was no choice but to found a town. They called it Watertown, and it seemed there was no other place in the North or South land with so much promise. The two men come to the end of town and turn toward the river. The earth grows muddy here. Planks have been set down to let people walk without getting their boots stuck in the muck. Tall grass and sweet-smelling flowers, petals gold and violet, grow all around the planks that cut back and forth across the field between the town and the river. At the edge of the water, a man and a woman wade waist-deep in the water, dragging their damp laundry across a pair of washboards. The woman eyes the men watching them from the bank and waves. The sheriff tips his cap. Suds float along the water. Farms line the far bank. Nascent fruit trees and lines of green things, too small and far away to see. Nack looks upriver, letting his eye trace the slightly winding path of the river, up to the base of the falls, where he follows the blue-white line skyward, until it disappears in the mist. Down here, so close to the water, it's too loud to speak, and they've grown used to not even trying. Nack looks at the sheriff. His eyes are closed. He takes in big lungfuls of air. He's an old gunslinger, but a good man all the same, Nack thinks. The sun-faded tattoo on the back of his hand speaks to his younger days. Thick white scars cross it in the shape of an X. The result he'd told Nack of getting so drunk and so low he'd tried to cut it off his hand. As if it would have done anything to erase the things I'd done, he said. For a long time, the residents of Watertown had not wanted a sheriff. They dreamed of a new kind of place where the people could govern themselves and treat each other with kindness and share. For the first time in any of their lives, there was more than enough to go around. And even when new people arrived and the borders of the town ballooned outward, peace seemed an easy thing. And then the gunslingers came. They saw them first by the cloud of dust trailing behind their horses zigzagging down the switchback trail leading up the plateau. And later that morning, they rode down Main Street, their faces dark with bad news. Nack and Cass and Nico greeted them in the road. They didn't bother dismounting. 
One of them drew her shooter and rested it in her lap. We bring news, she said. Then deliver it, Nico said. She fixed him with a look that said she knew exactly who he was. By order of the gunslingers, this place has been cited as an illegal gathering. Y'all are ordered to pack up and clear out. And if we refuse? The woman leaned closer and fixed Nico with a stare. Well then, I reckon there'd be hell to pay, traitor. Then she'd sat up in the saddle and pulled the reins, making her horse dance in a circle, kicking up dust all around her. She drew her gun and fired into the air before riding out of town and back up the switchbacks to damnation. That night, they elected the sheriff. That was nearly three months back, and beside the odd band of gunslingers tearing through town and causing little miseries, there never had been that hell to pay that had been promised. Knack feels a hand on his shoulder. It's the sheriff, smiling down at him, framed by the soft light of the sun through the mist. He cocks his head back toward the road. Can't stand around here all day daydreaming, his eyes say. They turn and there she is, the gunslinger. Knack only recognizes her after the flash, like the orange burst of a firework. The crashing water swallows the sound, so all he hears is a pop. The sheriff's eyes go wide as the bullet bursts his skin and burrows into his guts. The gunslinger smiles as she kills him. She smiles as she turns the gun on Knack. She's still smiling when he tackles her, wrestling for the gun. They fall backward into the tall grass, into the deep, dark muck below. Her finger is on the trigger. He holds the pistol by the barrel. It waves over their heads. The gun whispers, pop, pop, pop. His hands burn from the heat coming off it before he plunges it into the ground, filling the barrel and chambers with mud. The gunslinger wrestles free and climbs on top of him, bringing the mud-caked shooter down on him again and again, until he's finally able to throw her off. He pulls himself free from the muck, grabs her by the hair, and pushes her face into the mud. Her hands reach desperately for his shirt, grabbing him, but the mud sucks her down until she's nearly disappeared, and after a few moments, she goes still. Looking up, he sees the couple who'd been washing clothes down in the river. They stand on the planks, their hands outstretched. They haul him up. He sits on the planks, his legs dangling into the mud. His hands and the lower half of his body are black with the stuff. He draws a black streak across his face, trying to wipe the sweat from his eyes. He turns and locks eyes with the sheriff. Knack closes the sheriff's eyes muddying the dead man's cheeks and nose. He's too tired to move, so he sits there, tracking the sun as it arcs behind the mist, until the washer people fetch help, and a couple cowboys come to lift him to his feet and help him back to town. The gunslinger's body is dragged into the saloon and hefted onto one of the card tables, twice as heavy because of the muck clinging to her clothes and skin. She's only got one boot. The other was lost by the river. Her legs dangle off the side, dripping dark water onto the sawdust-covered floorboards. The sheriff's body is laid out on the bar, his arms crossed over his chest and his face cleaned. The barman stands over him with a few other townsfolk, quietly drinking to the dead man. Nax sits at a table against the windows, a glass of snake bite half drunk before him. His hands still shake, worse now than at the river. It's been a long while since he killed someone. And then he'd promised himself never again. Now he sits there, looking at the body, thinking of that broken promise. Knack! He looks up and there's Nico, waving his hand in front of his face. You in there? I'm here, he says, clearing his throat. You look like hell. Nico stares deep into his eyes. He's the kind of man who can do that without fearing what the other man will see. He doesn't wear a glove over his tattooed hand like a lot of the other ex-gunslingers. He'd never have bothered trying to cut the tattoo off him like the sheriff had done. Probably why the old man was elected instead of him. He reminds Nack of Emma. They're practically twins. Same eyes, 
Same triangle of a nose. But Knack tries not to think of her too much. Maybe you better lie down. I'm fine, Knack says, slugging the last of the snake bite. Nico takes a seat beside him. Rainer comes through the doors and Nico waves him over. He plants a kiss on the top of Nico's head before settling in beside him. The whole town's heard by now, Rainer says to Knack. Word is they're going to name you sheriff. His voice melts into the commotion around the room so that Knack can't make out what he's saying, and Rainer leans into Nico, whispering conspiratorially. Outside, the people have started gathering in hopes of seeing the body, forming a makeshift procession. At first, there's only a dozen or so, but the line quickly grows to a hundred or more. To Knack, peeking out the window, it looks like at least half the town. By the body, Cass talks with the doctor, and she opens up the gunslinger's mud-caked vest and starts going through her pockets. She finds a fob watch, a few coins, a flask, and a letter, folded three times and stuck together. She brings it over and unfolds it on the table in front of them. There are only three words written on the paper. Kill the sheriff. Nico picks up the paper and studies it like there's more there. That's how we... He says before stopping himself. That's how they do it. They keep it simple, so even the dullest gunslinger gets the order. You'd think they'd make sure the bastard has a brain before handing them a gun. Cass sneers, grabbing the paper and slamming it back on the table. Nico looks at her. Since when did you have to have a brain to pull a trigger? Nack stares at the paper, those three words running like a train through his mind. Cass goes over to the sheriff's body, fidgets with something on his chest, and when she comes back, she puts the silver, star-shaped badge on the table, beside the letter. You gonna pick it up, or am I gonna have to pin it on you myself? Cass says. Nack picks it up. It's heavier than he thought it'd be. He pins it to his chest. To the sheriff, the barman says, and everyone in the saloon raises their glass to Nack. To the sheriff, they repeat. Cass nods and claps him on the shoulder. And that's that. Late that night, Nack sits in his cabin, drinking snake bite. A fire burns in the cast iron stove. His bed stands to one side, unslept in. The light from the oil lamps cast deep shadows around the room. He's never gotten used to this place. The largeness of space all to himself. Not since Emma left. Sometimes when he can't sleep, he retreats to his Vardo, parked in the dirt beside the house. It still feels more like home than this place. He unfolds the paper Cass found on the dead gunslinger and rereads those three words. Kill the sheriff. He shivers and throws another log in the stove. The silver sheriff's badge sits dully on the table in front of him. He finishes the snake bite and begins to pour himself another. Then he thinks better of it, thinks about that look Emma would get when he'd had too much. He puts the stopper in the bottle, grabs the badge in his hat, and heads out into the cold, sobering night air. Nico's tinker shop is near the center of town. Darkness hangs heavy and cool over the rooftops. This late at night, it's the only building with a light burning behind the drawn windows. Knack knocks and steps inside. Nico and Rainer sit facing each other behind the shop's front desk, which doubles as Nico's workbench. They look up at the sound of the door opening, but when they see it's Knack, they go back to whatever they were talking about. They have this way of talking to one another. This quiet, serious whispering that makes everything seem like a secret. Now they're speaking so quiet that Knack doesn't want to intrude. He begins to leave, but Nico holds up a hand. Rainer whispers some final thing and then stands, gives Nico a kiss and smiles tiredly at Knack, before disappearing behind the curtain that separates their living space from the shop. Nico runs his hand through his hair. The look on his face like he and Rainer had been talking for hours. There's some half-built gizmo. A glove with little brass barbs arching over the knuckles, laying on the grease-stained leather cloth before him. What brings you here so late? Nico asks. Nack shrugs, pretends to look at the watches in Nico's small display case. 
Couldn't sleep is all. Thinking about Emma? How did you know? Because you only ever come by when you are? It's like I remind you of her. It's... it's fine, Nico says, cutting him off. I'll take it as a compliment. A silence falls over the room, before Nico clears his throat and says, I miss her too. She's not the only reason I couldn't sleep. What then? Nack takes the sheriff's badge from his pocket and puts it on the counter beside Nico's gizmo. They stare at it like it's a coiled snake they'd come upon in the brush. It wasn't fair for Cass to have put that on you. I could have said no. She knew you wouldn't. Not in front of all those people. Nack snatches it and pushes it deep into his pocket. They'll be coming for you, Nico continues. They target the lawmen. Kill enough of them and it breaks the town's spirit. I know it. So, what are you going to do about it? Lose sleep, drink a bit more, try not to die. What else is there? Rainer and I had been talking about something. He waves for Nack to come closer, as though afraid of eavesdroppers. We find Emma. What would that do? Well, for one, maybe he'd stop limping around like some wounded puppy. But for another, no one strikes fear into the gunslingers like Emma. Except Lobo, of course. And second, if you hadn't noticed, morale around here hasn't been the same since she left. People thought of her as a kind of guardian angel. Nack shakes his head. It's no use. If she doesn't want to be found, then she won't be. Or maybe you're just afraid of seeing her again. Maybe I am. What happened between you two? Lobo died. She wasn't the same after that. She had to go through the grief of it twice, and I don't expect the first time made it any easier. Nico nods. A person like that dying leaves a mark on the world. I barely knew him, but I reckon that's true. He looks at the big clock on the wall. I ought to be heading home. He's at the door when Nico says, Think on it, Sheriff. Think about what it would mean to see her again. Not just for you, for all of us. Nax slips through the door without another word. Outside, the sky is dark and starless. There are never any stars over Watertown. Sheriff. He turns the word over in his head. It had made him flinch when Nico called him it. And when he thinks of the word, he still pictures the dead man. It makes him shiver. I wish you were here, Emma, he says to himself, turning up his collar against the cold and making his way back to his cabin. I could use a bit of your strength right about now. It's just after dawn. The rising sun makes the air in Watertown gold and pink with new light. Nack hears the horses first. They're quiet, moving at a slow trot. He rises from the chair he'd been trying to sleep in and wraps his holsters around his waist. At the window, he eases aside the curtain with the end of his gun and peeks outside. Five strangers, dressed in black, with kerchiefs guarding their mouths, make their way down Main Street, leading their horses by the reins. Their guns are drawn. When they pass Nack's cabin, one of them peels off and approaches the front door. Quickly, Nack sidles from the window, his bootless feet moving noiselessly across the floor as he flattens himself against the wall beside the door. The door handle twitches and then turns. Nack holds his breath. The door swings open. A single gunslinger enters, his shooter in his outstretched hand. He takes two steps inside before realizing the bed is empty, unslept in. He turns and Nack catches him with a blow across the cheek. The gunslinger turns on his heel, lifts Nack off the ground, and rams him against the wall. The gun falls from Nack's hand and clatters to the floor. He scrabbles for the other man's gun and they tumble to the ground, first the gunslinger, then Nack on top of him. He clamps one hand over the gunslinger's kerchief-covered mouth and with the other wrestles for the gun. The gunslinger knees him in the groin, pulls him close by the front of his shirt, and headbutts him. For a second, everything goes black. And the next thing Nack knows, he's on the ground. The gunslinger gets to his feet, but he can't find the gun. 
It got tossed aside in the fray, and now hides in one of the shadows pooling around the floor. Shit, goddamn, he curses. They spot it at the same time, a glint of gunmetal under the bed. Nat gets to a knee and dives for it, colliding with the gunslinger. There's a struggle, broken by a gun blast. The gunslinger slumps to the ground, blood streaming from his nose and the corner of his mouth. Nack crouches on a knee, huffing air, ears ringing. The door flies open again and there are two more gunslingers drawn by the sound of gunfire. Two gunshots ring out and the gunslingers drop. Nico appears on the threshold, his revolver smoking. No time to rest, Sheriff. There's more of them. He helps Nack to his feet. They crouch in the doorway, looking out on the empty street. The gunslingers' horses mill around near the saloon, but the gunslingers themselves are nowhere to be seen. I spotted five, Nack says, still catching his breath. There's more than that. They caught me in my drawers in bed. Weren't for Rainer being an early riser, that probably would have been the end of me. If they came after you and me, that means they'll probably go for Cass, I know. But that old bird can handle herself fine. That's why I hustled down here. What? You were worried about me? Nico smirks. Figured you might have stayed up all night with your lips around the bottle. There. Neck whispers, pointing with his gun at the alley on the far side of the saloon. I see him, Nico says. They ease away from the threshold and go out the window, into the alley beside the cabin. Running around the back of the buildings, they don't bother staying quiet for the roar of the waterfall behind them. They get to Leanne's distillery and cut back toward Main Street, taking cover behind a couple barrels. Across the way, the big saloon sign hangs over the street. Five more gunslingers, clad in black, peer into the empty bar room on the first floor through the window facing the alley. Cass's room is on the second floor. She works as muscle for the bar owners, making sure everyone pays and no one gets hurt. In exchange, she can run up her tab at the bar as high as she wants and gets a roof over her head. She wouldn't say so but she may have taken Lobo's death even harder than Emma. She just ain't the running type. That's what Nack thinks, anyway. They wait until the gunslingers slip inside the saloon to make their move. They check the street to make sure there aren't any more coming, then dart across and peer through one of the big front windows. The gunslingers are moving slow, overcautious. <laughs> they know who they've been tasked with killing. Nico taps Nack and holds up three fingers. They draw their revolvers. Two. They aim through the glass. One. Their guns break the morning. Two of the gunslingers hit the stairs, splotches of blood like polka dots on the wallpaper. The third one makes it to the second floor balcony and lowers his shoulder into the first door, crashing into the room of one of the girls. There's a scream from inside. Nack and Nico climb through the window. The gunslinger appears in the upstairs doorway, raining bullets down into the lobby. Nack and Nico up into table and crowd behind it for cover. No one notices the door at the far end of the balcony open, or sees Cass emerge, her silver hair matted to one side and in her long johns. She marches toward the gunslinger, grabs him by a shooting arm, and twists it until he drops his piece, before leading him to the railing and throwing him over like he's nothing. He lands with a mortal thud on the floor below. Nico and Nack emerge from behind the table. Cass checks on the woman, and when she's satisfied she's unhurt, stares daggers at the men below. Are there more, or can I go back to bed? Nico can't help but smile. Back to bed. Cass just nods and drags herself back to her room, slamming the door behind her. Nico turns to Nack and claps him on the shoulder. Come on, Sheriff. I'll make you breakfast. You're listening to Bullet Catcher Season 3 by Joaquin Lowe. Produced by Realm, your portal to another world. Listen away. Bullet Catcher is written by Joaquin Lowe. Produced by Marco Palmieri. And executive produced by Molly Barton. Performed by Inez del Castillo. Audio produced, directed, and designed by Amanda Rose Smith. Additional editing by Corey Barton. Original theme composed by Hashem Asadolahi, with performances by Justin Morell and Josh Deutsch. Cover art by Christine Barcelona.